This video demonstrates adding a create file action to a logic app to create an on premise file of information. We are in our logic app designer in our sample logic app. We're going to create a new step. For the connector under choose an operation, we're going to choose the file system connector. Within that connector, you can see there are a number of actions from which we're going to select create file. Now, if you've been doing work out in logic apps, it may default to a connection uh, previously established. For illustration purposes, I'm going to hit the change connection option so we can set up a new connection. And go ahead and click add new. So when setting up connection to a file system, you give it a connection name. You want to give it a root folder from which to uh, base the connection. In this case, I'm going to select D colon backslash. You then need to provide authentication. It's very important under the username that you also include the domain for which your uh, Active Directory credentials will be uh, connecting from. And then you will also have to choose a connection gateway. This is a previously established uh, gateway that is a piece of software sitting on a server somewhere on premises called the on premises data gateway software. In this case, I will click and choose DDIWS 15 GW02. I can go ahead and then hit create. That will validate the connection and then takes us back to the create file connector where we then set the parameters for this file creation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and indicate a folder path. That folder path I, then takes me to the file system for the connection. I can show the contents of that file uh, or of the, the, the folders and files uh, for that connection. In this case, I'm going to go down to the util folder folder and dive into that going to go to the RDS folder, dive into that. And from there, I'm going to select the two Azure folder. For the file name, I'm going to use a dynamic expression. Clicking on the expression tab, I'm just going to use the concat function. There are a variety of functions you can use here. This is where dynamic content comes into play within a logic app. Uh, previous, uh, information from previous actions flows down into this uh, dynamic content tab. And you can also choose from expressions. We're going to go ahead and concatenate and I'm gonna feed it a string of the logic app name. And then also append to that from the uh, dynamic content section and the when a new email arrives action. I'm going to click see more and then from there I can scroll down to choose the message ID which is the unique identifier of that message. So that should then um, allow me to just going to review this function real quick make sure it looks right click OK. That will drop off uh, uh, a function into the file name property of this action. And then for the contents of the file, I'm going to go ahead and use dynamic content. And when a new email arrives, I'm going to say see more. And then just for the uh, ex example purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and put the body of the initial email into the file. With that done, I'm going to go ahead and save the Logic app. 
I'm then going to run the Logic app using the Run Trigger button. I could also uh, do when a new email arrives and uh, trigger it via our normal trigger of sending an email. Actually, why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to create a new email from that step. I'm going to create an email sent to me with a subject of Trigger Logic app, Logic app name. I will go ahead and send that. I go out to the overview. We'll see that the email was sent. We'll then wait for the approval email to come through. And you see it's running. The approval email has come through. I'm going to go ahead and hit approve. Close that. Um, we can dive into this run and we can see that the all of the steps completed. If I click on the create file, we'll be able to see all of the inputs and outputs. And if I look out to that folder, I will see that the file was created. And if I look at the contents of that file, I will see that it contains the contents of that original email.